I appreciated uh, our sister Jean's testimony uh, on several levels, one of which is, I want you to turn to the book of the Psalms tonight. I want you to turn to the 119th Psalm, as a matter of fact. And I also appreciated it because it had to do with getting something from the Bible, the Word of God. When I was a teenager graduating from high school, I have to admit my life was in a mess because I was simply living for myself and uh, I just wanted to do my own thing. I was looking forward to getting out of the house and uh, having freedom uh, from uh, parental rule. When I graduated from high school, my aunt and uncle presented me as a, uh, with a graduation gift, and uh, it was the first study Bible that I ever owned. I had been given Bibles, but never a study Bible. I was given given a study Bible. It had a a beautiful, genuine leather uh, cover, and on the front of it, in gold letters, was uh, engraved my name. That I graduated in June, and that Bible sat on the shelf or in my room for the whole summer. I don't know that I, I don't remember ever reading it, but I took it with me to Bible college. I had signed up to go to a Bible college and signed up to be a Bible major, and yet I wasn't even reading the Bible. But when I got there, I started to read the Bible. I had to, for one thing, but uh, my interest got stirred, and I started to read the Bible. And uh, I got used to reading the Bible, and uh, God began to work in my heart as a result of that. And uh, I'm telling you that early on in my freshman year of college, I memorized Psalm 119, verses 9 to 11. (laughs) I want you to turn there with me tonight. Psalm 119, verse 9, 10, and 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? That was pretty pertinent to my life, but it refers to not just a young man, it refers to all people. Whatever our age is, whatever our gender is, and there's only two. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. I memorized those verses, and then I wrote in the front cover of the Bible these words. They weren't original with me, but... I wrote them, I heard them somewhere, so I wrote down, this book will keep me from sin, or sin will keep me from this book. I struggled with sin. I struggled with a guilty conscience and and feeling dirty spiritually. But based upon those verses... I believe that it was possible for me somehow, some way, to become clean by daily connecting with God via the Bible. The psalmist cries out in that ninth verse, How can I be clean? How can I be clean with God? That's what he's asking. And then in the remainder of those verses in that section, in that second section of the psalm, he actually answers his question. He answers that for us, how we can be clean. And what you're going to find is, in the answer, he does not emphasize what God does for him. And let me tell you, being clean before God begins with what God does for us. 
It begins by recognizing the fact that I have to be washed from my sins by his blood. It begins by recognizing the fact that there, that there is nothing that can wash away my sin but the blood of Jesus. That the blood of Christ cleanses from all sin. That's what he does for us. That's where it begins. But the emphasis in this 119th and in this section about how can I be clean before God? How can I be cleansed? Is rather an emphasis upon what I must do in dependence upon God's grace to maintain that cleanness in my life that he has established. So that's what this section is about. And by the way, (laughs) there's no magic formula. And as Jean said in her testimony, there's there's no shortcut to it. It's not a once and for all done deal and, uh, you know, I'm clean, that's it. Not that at all. And I think that's what you're going to find here. But before we go any further, before I share with you how you can be clean in your daily life as a believer, let's pray. Father, thank you for this section. Thank you so much that you answer and you speak to us in such practical ways because the people that we're listening to that you inspired to write this are people that had the same problems we do. That's why the Psalms in particular is just so helpful. And so I pray that we'd identify with, uh, if David's the writer of this psalm, we'd identify with David here, and we'd find out how to be clean, how to stay clean, what our part is. And Lord, may it be spiritually life revolutionizing. I pray that you would just turn us around, turn us to yourself, As need be, turn us back to you. Quicken our hearts. Revive our hearts, we pray, through this passage tonight. We do it in Jesus' name. I want you to look at verse 9 again with me. As he begins to answer the question, how can I be clean? How can I be clean before God as a believer? How can I live a clean life before God? His answer is, begins there in the second part of that ninth verse by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Let me put that in one word for you. Simplify it. Listening. Listening. There is absolutely no substitute for a daily quiet time alone with the Lord. You'll never live a clean life if you have a hit and miss time with God. You want to be clean? How clean do you really want to be? How desperately do you desire that? If you really desire that, you know what? There's no sacrifice too great. If you have to miss some sleep, so what? You miss some sleep. But you have a daily quiet time with God because you enter into fellowship with Him. You hear what He has to say to you in the Bible. That's the first step of a clean life, of maintaining a cleanliness with God. You listen to him by taking heed thereto according to his word. The, 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 the term word there, the last uh, term in that uh, verse, is the Hebrew word devar. And a rabbi, when uh, the Torah time is, it comes up every Sunday, we have a devar given to us. We have a word given to us. And here, it's actually a reference not to the word of a man, not to the word of a rabbi or a pastor or a teacher, but here, the, 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 the word that is being referred to, of course, is what God says. It is God that is articulating His truth and His will spoken by Himself to us. That's what we're to listen to. And what for? 
Look at the 13th verse. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. In other words, you listen to God, it brings, it, it's, it's, a, it's a part of being clean before God, but it's also something you can share with others as well. You share what God speaks to you. you. As you listen to God, you have something that you can pass on, that you can share with others as well. And th there's no self-sufficiency in this. You're asking God, you're asking God to speak to you. You're asking God for the grace. Look at verse 12. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. It's not okay. I'm going to take the art and science of interpretation here, and I'm going to examine this passage of Scripture, and I'm going to uh, do an exposition of it. All fine and good. But this is listening to the Spirit of God speak through His Word to you personally. So it's listening. It's a personal word from the Lord to your heart. And you neglect that, and you will open yourself up to the devil's temptations. How? How can I keep clean before God? By taking heed to God, by listening to God. And if you don't listen to God, the implication is you're not going to be clean. Here's the second thing I want to share with you. Look at verse 10. How can we have and maintain a clean life with God before him? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Not only listening, but if you want to live clean, seeking. Seeking. With my whole heart, he says, have I sought thee. What you read with your eyes has to be translated into the living word of God in your life, to you. You have to connect with your whole soul. You reach out with a longing, thirsting for God, and he is going to meet you. You listen like that, you seek like that, and you're going to hear from him. But it will never happen until you are surrendered to God. If you're not surrendered to Him, you won't have the enjoyment of, uh, uh, that is meant to be yours as God's child. In fact, notice verse 10, you'll be in the danger of wandering from God and backsliding away from Him. you got to be listening. you got to be seeking. And the two really go together. Uh, it's, it's really, look, look at the word, the words whole heart, with my whole heart, not half heart. You know? It, it's not, well, you know, I, I, I intend to, and if I have the time, uh, no. You are fully determined that nothing is going to keep you back from getting alone with God and listening to Him and seeking His face, seeking His presence is what I mean, and coming into connection and contact with Him and knowing it, and when you do that with your entire being, nothing withheld from Him, when you do it with your whole heart, He's going to bring cleansing to your way. Listening and seeking and then the third thing, verse 11, he says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. How do you live a clean life? How do you avoid the dirty pitfalls? How do you stay out of the dirt? Stay clean before God by listening, by seeking. Are you with me? Thirdly, by, list, by, by cherishing. Thy word have I hid, literally treasured up in my heart. You know, this 11th verse is often used, I think rightly so, as an encouragement for people to memorize God's word. But this is saying much more than simply having an intellectual exercise that enables you to feel good about being able to quote verses. What he's saying here is that God's word becomes to you the treasure of all treasures. 
that God's word is cherished by you. It's the greatest value in your life to value the word of God so greatly and continually that it becomes your constant food for thought. Look at verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. What it's talking about here is, thy word have I hid in my heart. You absorbed God's word. You know what happens when you take a dry sponge and dip it in a bucket of water? How that dry, uh, useless thing all of a sudden becomes soft and pliable and useful. Cherishing God's Word, hiding it in your heart, it's, it's soaking it up, it's absorbing deep inside your soul, your very innermost being, what God says. That what He says becomes a part of you, and it defines who you are. It's, it becomes how you think, how you act, how you talk, your attitude, generally how you carry yourself. It's, it's all the result of cherishing God's word, of making it your treasure of all treasures, your greatest value in life. Resolve to retain God's truth in your heart. Look at verse 16. He says, uh, I will not forget thy word. You cherish it, you'll not forget it. You will totally absorb it in your life. Until that happens, you haven't cherished God's word. You haven't really valued, valued the word of God as intended. That there might be within you a defense against sin. So how serious are you about living a clean life? If you're really serious about a clean life, it involves listening it involves seeking, and it involves cherishing God's Word. I see as we come to the church every time signs, digital signs on the roadway, wash your hands with soap. I don't have to be told that. My mother taught me that when I was a child. I know to wash my hands. I, whether there's a, a pandemic or not, I always am washing my hands with soap and water. I know to do that. And that's how you clean yourself physically, with soap and water. But what he's saying here, God intends us to have a spiritual cleansing where we are washing our soul, if you will, with the soap and water of the Word of God. The whole person, inside and out, absorbing the Word of God, cleansing our way, that is characteristic of, of the very lifestyle that we live. So the next time you see on uh, the television a commercial or on the roadway the sign, wash your hands with soap and water, think, how shall a young man cleanse his way? By the washing of the water of the word, Paul says in Ephesians 5, 26. It's a cleanser for the soul. That familiar story in Luke chapter 10, where Jesus drops in as a guest in Martha's home, and Martha's busy as the homemaker fixing the meal and getting things ready to give Jesus just the best hospitality that she possibly can. And her sister Mary is just oblivious to all of that because she has one focus, and she's sitting there at the feet of Jesus taking in everything that he's teaching or saying. And of course, that makes Mary or, or Martha very upset because she's frustrated, she's flustered. I understand She's left all alone to do all of this, and there's just so much to do. She needs help. She comes to Jesus, asks him to please have her sister leave your feet and come and help me. And Jesus gently rebukes her, right? And he says, Martha, 
Martha, you're, 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 you're troubled about many things, but only one thing is needful. And you know what, Martha? That one thing that's needful isn't a meal for me. That one thing that is needful is a meal for you. That one thing that is needful is that you sit at my feet like your Mary has chosen the better part. She's chosen that one thing that's needful. Only be concerned with one main thing, sitting at the feet of Jesus to know Jesus, who he is, what he thinks, what he knows, what he does, what he desires, how to do his will, how to love him more, how to follow him closely, more closely, how to hear and recognize his voice. I wonder in this group tonight if I would ask you, how do you identify the voice of Jesus from your own thoughts? How would you answer me? Would you know? See? It comes from sitting at his feet and spending time with him, and then his voice becomes very familiar. It's like a, you know, like a, a voice that you haven't heard for years, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, you get a call on the phone, and you hear that voice, and you immediately recognize it because you were close in the past. If you knew me back when I was young, you'd not think I'm the same person. And you know what? You'd be right, I'm not. I'm not that same person. I've chosen a clean lifestyle. And I gave my sinful, guilty, dirty life to Jesus in confession and surrender. And I sat down at the feet of Jesus, and I've been there ever since. You feel dirty because of some sinful thing in your life? Because of a sinful lifestyle? You want to be clean? If you're saved, you simply need to claim Jesus is cleansing. If you're not saved, rather, you need to just simply claim Jesus is saving blood. But if you're a believer, you can enjoy a clean heart by getting that sin right with God. He'll cleanse you. And you can live a clean lifestyle, which is what the psalmist is talking about here. You can live a clean lifestyle by listening, by seeking, and by cherishing the Word of God through the living Christ. How do you prevent sin? Look at it with me. By taking heed thereto according to thy word, with your whole heart I have sought thee. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. By the washing of the water of the word. Never forget. This book, It'll keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. Our Heavenly Father, we do pray that you might continue to use the simple truths of listening, seeking, and cherishing your word from the psalmist here in the 119th in our own hearts and lives. I pray there'll be a bunch of people that would want your cleansing. They'd want to be clean, washed by the blood, and then they'd want to stay clean, washed daily by the Word of God, the water of the Word, the cleansing of the soul. What a wonderful washing it is every morning when we get up, and we can have a washing of the water of the Word in our life. May that be our daily habit. May we not uh, leave home without it without having had our spiritual bath, without being washed by the water of the word, that we might as people have a clean way. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. May we do it in Jesus' name.